you know, I started out with this whole thing about the things that the mainstream media would just rather not talk about. And you know what? I just got back from the mall. Now, it is before Christmas at the time of this recording, and there's a lot of people out there shopping. But I'll say this, that this is pertinent to any time of the year. Christmas is just is there's just more of it. There's higher levels of guilt on people to buy lots and lots of things. But ultimately, this is kind of an addition to a show I did uh, a couple of years ago, and it was called Don't Allow Yourself to Be a Sacrifice for Consumerism. And if we think of the old days when you know you had certain cultures that had religious rights and people would actually it wasn't always forced it uh many cultures people would actually uh accept being made a sacrifice you know literal sacrifice or they would uh they would actually volunteer to be a sacrifice and you know they'd march up that long those long steps of the pyramid and often they did come from you know the upper class hence sacrifice uh of course many of these societies would go out and round up people and they were like they were like uh sacrificed in the hundreds or the thousands but the special sacrifices were the ones who did it completely voluntarily and they they would march up there and they would lay down on that altar while the priest or you know in some societies a priestess would raise that knife and come down and uh finish that person off uh i'm sure this has happened ever since way back in history way back in history and you know i, I it's kind of funny. I have a new book coming out called The Destiny of Our Past that is set during the times of Noah. And, you know, the idea being that this was a very advanced society, a society that is comparable, if not more advanced than today, that was uh, destroyed by the flood. Now, whether you believe in the flood or not, or something in between, that's not the point I'm trying to make. I am saying, though, that people have employed sacrifice in religion throughout all of history. Sometimes people, sometimes animals, sometimes grain, just something that means something to them. But we've sort of made it to where now we sacrifice our time and our talents and our aspirations in life, if we count those aspirations as being the normal, traditional uh, goals in life, uh, marriage, family, uh, and so forth. We are sacrificing all those things in the name of consumerism. Okay? I know that sounds like, oh man, you know, is this going to be something like hippies or something like that? No. Consumerism was actually something that was condemned a hundred years ago when it was first starting to take effect. When people like Edward Bernays and others started this whole concept that we we sell people the idea of buying things to make themselves feel better. Not buying things because you need them, not buying a pair of pants because you've got a hole in the pair of pants you have for work, but, 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 but buying it just because it makes you feel better. And we have conditioned our society to believe that you know, even if your pants look perfectly fine, they're not even faded, that if they're out of style, you know, if the, if the new style for this year says that you're, you know, you're going to be an outsider if you don't wear that new style, you toss those pants in the garbage or give them away. And this is true for our entire society. We have... A throwaway society where, you know, sometimes you buy these things at certain stores. I won't name which ones. But, 
you know, you assemble something like a kitchen or, and, you know, it says, well, maybe you're tired of that one. Get rid of it and get a new one and stuff. We don't buy things anymore because we need it. And we don't buy things because we want to have it 20 years from now. We buy things because we've been conditioned to do so. So when I came, you know, into that mall, I saw people walking around and I'm not joking. Okay. I am not joking. They were walking around like they were in a daze. Okay? I've been to nightclubs before. And if, you, if you're if you at a nightclub where it's very fast-paced, and you know people have really gotten into the music, at around maybe 1 or 2 o'clock, they're all sweaty. You know, this is even if they're not drinking. They're all sweaty, and they, they have this kind of look about them, like they're totally caught up in the music. I've been to hippie gatherings where people are dancing to those drum beats and it's like they're in a trance because maybe they've been doing it for an hour, two, three hours and they just kind of lose themselves. And you can see it in their eyes. It takes a while for them to recover. But I also was seeing that look today when I was at the mall. People walking around with this glazed look about them. Okay, this kind of this this uh, sensory overload of all of the imagery and the other people and this consumeristic frenzy to buy more and more and more. And a lot of it is fueled by guilt. And, you know, guilt is a very major c component of many religions. <laughs> yeah, it keeps you in check when no one's looking. But this guilt is fueled by the idea that if you don't buy the right thing for your husband, your wife, your kids, your grandma, whatever, then you're unworthy. And they're going to have that same feeling too. And if you get something you don't like, whereas you gave something really good to that other significant other in your life, you're going to feel angry. Admit it. You're going to feel let down. Even though maybe they bought that with the best intentions, there's a part of you. You'll, you'll put that smile on your face and say thank you, and then you'll put it whatever it is away in the attic for a while, or you might not even unwrap it, and eventually it gets uh, given away to Goodwill in the future or put up in a garage sale. The thing is that we have we, we have got caught up in this so much and we go out and we, you know, we watch, you know, let's just not say even going out. We sit at home. We watch television. Television tells us that we're not good enough. We're, you know, we're shown that if you, you do this or you don't do this or you don't buy this, that you can't compensate for your weakness. You can't compensate for your deficiencies. So you'll be spotted out in public. And so therefore, you need to do it. You need to buy it. And we're conditioned that way. You watch uh, mainstream news programs. They tell you about how awful the world is. And then you get these commercials on TV that they might start out with something you know filled with anxiety and fear. And then you buy it. You know, you're more likely to... Because it relieves you subconsciously. You live in a horrible world. You look horrible. You don't measure up. You don't have as much. You need to buy this. You need to consume. You need to sacrifice the hours you spent at work in order to compensate. You may not even have the money. So you pull out that plastic and you run up that tab. And, you know, your sacrifice is in the future. And we're, you know, I, I tend to think actually about the concept of what our economy would be like if people only bought the most, you know, maybe not their house or something like that, you know, because it would take you a long time to save up for that. Maybe even take a long time to save up for a car. But what if everything else we bought with cash immediately, not credit? Okay. And then we try to keep in mind that when we work, that's hours spent. We sacrifice when we go to work. 
we sacrifice the eight hours or whatever you work of time that is an opportunity cost, something you could have done otherwise. And then you get this money as a reward. Of course, the government yanks a bunch of it out. But what you're left over with, you go out and you sacrifice it. And you're probably thinking, but I need to buy clothes. I need to buy food. I need to buy all these other things. Yes, you do. Okay? You need to buy stuff. But, but, I think many times we overdo it. We buy things that we don't need with money that we actually don't have. And then we wonder why we're not happy. Well, maybe if I buy some more stuff, I'll be happy. Maybe if I have a better car, I'll be happy. You know that's not the case. And you can go look out at a high school parking lot filled with hundreds of cars driven by students. Most of those cars are used cars. And they were bought by people who were trying, you know, they had all of this pride in their, oh, this is my car, and maybe now I'll have what I need, and it'll be so wonderful, and it'll compensate for whatever, you know, is bothering me. And now a high school student drives around, probably, you know, maybe jacks up the wheels or does other things with it. But this is really what consumerism is all about. Now, in a traditional society, you send your dog, you know, in one of these societies, like, you know, well, there's a bunch of them. I wouldn't could name any by name, but they're, they're out there. And very advanced ones, too. You, you uh, march your daughter up. You know, you send her off with the priest, and they march her up. And she might be looking forward to this. March her up to the altar. She lays there on the altar. The priest plunges the knife into her, pulls the heart out. It's still beating for a second. The gods are really overjoyed. Probably the crowds are like in awe and so forth. Now, what do we sacrifice nowadays? You know, I was reading an article a while back about Italians who have one of the lowest birth rates in the world. And they interviewed young women. And these young women were saying, you know what? I think I would rather you know, buy, be able to buy shoes and use fashionable clothes than to get pregnant and have children. So they're caught up in this like, oh my gosh, it's so wonderful going out with my new clothes and my new this and my new that and my designer handbag that might cost – I don't know, uh, in, in U.S. dollars might cost three, four thousand dollars $4,000. Now, the, the couple that lived in this ancient civilization, they probably have other children. I hate to say it, but they probably do. Uh, so they at least carry on their family line. The, also, they have this sense that they are now closer to God. Now, I disagree with human sacrifice, okay? I'm not trying to promote it, even though in my sci in my sci-fi book, there's a lot of it. <laughs> um, again, it's during the times of Noah. But, but the thing is that they at least would have felt like they were doing something of a more esoteric or spiritual manner. Horrible as it sounds, they would have felt this way. Now, what are the women in Italy going to be thinking in the future? The the handbag is probably going to eventually, I don't care if it costs several thousand dollars, it's going to be out of style. It's going to wear out, whatever. It's going to be in, you know, I've been to Rome many times. They have some really cool secondhand stores there, you know, where you can go in and buy stuff in. And... The, the, the thing is, these were things that maybe in the 80s or 90s would have been like, whoa, this is high fashion. Now they're just there on the rack, and you can pick them up for a very low price. And this is what young people, who won't be young forever, okay? If you're in your 20s, you're not going to be in your 20s that much longer. If you're in your 30s, you're not going to be in your 30s much longer. I'll tell you this much. When I was... Oh, gosh, was I even in my 20s at the time? I don't remember, but I remember there was a show that was on. I was at least in my early 20s, if if, uh, if I was in my 20s. There was a show on called 30-something, and I thought, oh, my gosh, that's so far in the future. 
And then I became 30-something. And then when I hit 40, it was like, oh my gosh, now I'm past 30-something. The thing is, you will advance in age. What will you have for it? Okay? What will you have for it? Most people, their childbearing years after 40 are over. Men, of course, can have kids when they're past 40, but most most people marry people that are about the same age. With men, maybe a couple years younger. But most men are not Donald Trump. Okay, He's like 70 years old, and he has a 10-year-old son. Uh, most men don't do that. Most women are are unable to have kids when they start when they hit their forties, and so you know, despite what you you know, some movie star that's going to some doctor and getting all this special treatment, you know, they can have kids. Sure, I mean, I know someone actually decided she was going to have another kid when she was in her forties, and oh gosh, she was like forty five, but she was pumped through so many hormones. You know, that uh, finally they, you know, her ovaries gasped out an egg and it fertilized and she did have a job. But again, medical intervention. What are you going, if you give up in your in your 20s and 30s, if you give up the opportunity to have the children that you really desire because you were too busy doing other things because your consumeristic society says this is what's important. Family comes second. Religion comes, well, don't even worry about religion. Mainstream media mocks it. Maybe because religion goes against the idea of consumerism. So there, maybe it's not so, so political. Maybe part of it is an antagonism because of economics. Because if everyone was suddenly very traditional, very religious, um, I mean traditional in the sense that maybe they're not religious, but they're very traditional, this would actually hurt the economy. Single people or double income people with no kids spend a lot more money on trips. And by the way, they use a lot more resources and their so-called carbon footprint is way in excess of families. Okay? But uh, they're, they're, a, uh, they're a corporate dream. Single people work longer hours. They buy more stuff. You know, they're like, you know, worker bees in a hive. But consumerism promotes this. And ultimately, I think, when we sacrifice ourselves for consumerism, we are actually sacrificing our future. Because if all you're really zeroing in on is materialism and consumerism and that sort of thing, then who's having the children? Who's carrying on the culture? Consumerism itself is actually sort of like a cancer in a body. Okay? It actually kills the body that it's in eventually. Because eventually, well, aside from just the lack of any kind of feeling of connectiveness that consumerism promotes, it reduces birth rates and sometimes to the birth rates down to nothing. And therefore, like in the case of, you know, you look at Italy or Japan, where the birth rate is so, so freaking low, you know, that's the end of those cultures. Given, you know, a couple generations, that's it. And, you know, think about that sometime. You know, the, 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 the sacrifice just to have more goodies is actually sacrificing our future. Anyway. That's all the time we have now. I'm thankful that you tuned in, and I hope you'll come back next week for another edition of Unlock the Door Radio here on UCY TV Productions.
this is JJ Inc. And when I'm on planet Earth, I listen to UCY.TV.